Hey there, color pencil enthusiasts. Today, it's all about layering, and I've got five essential techniques that will be sure to improve your drawing skills substantially. And the biggest tip I can give you is that layering is all about patience, and that one thing I hear from students, getting a light hand. So let's dive right in. Consider subscribing, sharing, and liking this video. It will help my channel. Let's start with grabbing a 2B graphite pencil. You're gonna draw five circles, either freehand, or you can use a circle template like what I'm doing. I'll draw mine in an overlapping circle format like the end image that you see here because I want to have some fun with this and I'm all about the fun. Layering is one of those must-have skills every colored pencil artist should master. You may have heard it before, layering is the all-important skill that takes a flat and boring drawing to a wow. It's all about stacking colors on top of colors on top of colors on top of... Okay, well, you get it. Layering is the key to shading, color mixing, adding texture with values, blending, and even smoothing out those pesky stroke lines. There's a lot to unpack today, and I love sharing my knowledge with you. So take notes or go over the video because there's a lot of great techniques and information for you to use. The wonderful pencils I'm using are Luminance from Karen Dash, but you can use any colored pencils for this tutorial that you might have. Just use this color chart and match with whatever you have. I do have a link for the color chart in the description box below also. Like all always, I'll post the color and pressure I'm using in big round circles in the upper left hand corner. Layering technique number one is going to be about shading. I'm using yellow as a base, orange to layer and blend, and red as the main, and burgundy as a shade color. If you've been drawing by diving right in with a main color, I can say that right now as one of my biggest tips, you need to stop that. So look, I always think about my subject as something that doesn't exist in a vacuum. I know that subjects will be impacted by all sorts of external things. For our purposes, we'll say that we're going to draw a subject that's in real space, like on a table. That ball is being influenced by all sorts of things around it. The, the color of the lighting, the reflection of the table it's sitting on, the reflection of other objects around it. It's the very nature of the object itself. The idea about layering is that it's meant to pick up on all those things. Layering allows you to create visual dynamic interest. It makes your image wow. You can see that the ball image on the left is warm and more orange yellow while the one on the right looks more pinks. If I want my main subject to be warm, I'll layer with colors that lean that way and the opposite is going to happen with cool colors. So what exactly is a base color in layering? Base colors are those colors that set up the direction of the end look of the subject. So if your subject is warm or cool or light or dark, and the subject color itself is going to be influenced by the base color. Bases normally are applied over the whole subject in a flat application with no attempt to create form. The base layer can be quite messy. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. So using layers to shade is a fantastic way to build volume on the subject. It means we can add a variety of colors on top of colors to go from the highlights to the shadows. Along with the red color change, I'm also considering the pressure that I'm using. Another tip is stay with a light pressure at the beginning of your drawing. This is where having that light hand comes in. I hear a lot from students who tell me that their colors are way too dark or heavy at the very beginning. So the big hint is you should still be able to see a lot of the paper tooth even with three or four layers. I'll add in the orange and keep building up the layers. I'm going to edge away from the highlight this time and go slower than the other two layers as I want to be more consistent with my pencil strokes. I'll change my pressure to a two and I'll start to build up that shading along the edge away from the highlight. This is the process that I always use and I always find that it's really one of the best ways of working with colored pencils. I've switched over to the darker red and you can see that the layering is starting to take on a shading. By sharpening my pencils, I can get a really good edge and then carry that heavier pressure downwards. Remember, our subject's main color is red, so we want that to be the dominant color. The layering allows for a mix and creates a consistent new hue. And as we go towards the highlights, we can see that it's more three-dimensional and it looks like there's a lot of layering going on with the color change as it goes towards the highlight. Okay, so now for a little bit of the fun part. This is where we start to get a little bit darker with our layers. I'm working with a darker color, which is the burgundy, and I'm going very, very slow along the edge. As I'm doing that, I'm just thinking about pressure that I'm using. Even with a pressure between two and three, this is pretty typical. It doesn't necessarily mean that when you start with a certain pressure that you're going to stick with it through the whole subject. You might start with a pressure in one area, and then as you move towards light, then it might go a little bit lighter in your pressure. So you might switch 
switch to a pressure of one. Or if you're actually moving away from light, you might want to press a little bit harder. This is all just part of the layering process. I switched back over to the dark red and I'm just continuing to build layers. You'll notice that I'm working particularly along the edge away from the highlight and I'm working between a pressure of about a one and a two. Lots of layering is going on and my final color that I'm going to be adding is going to be the yellow and again I'm adding the yellow in because this is a warm red that I want to create so I'm layering on the yellow on top of that just to create a little bit more warmth with the reds. We're on to number two, layering with mixing colors. I'm going to start by using a light green to do the outside edging, and then I'll use a kneaded eraser to remove the graphite. I'm going to use the same green. I'm going to set the highlight, and I'm going to start doing a base layer over the whole drawing. So we're going to start with looking at the example of our subject. We want to achieve a color and effect that looks similar to what we see. I'm layering in the base layer fast, a little bit loose and uneven, light on the pressure, and there is no need to go too dark right now. We can always go to the dark side when we add more layers in the mix. In this circle, we're creating a two-tone effect. Often with a subject like this funky AI blueberry, you'll have a flow of one color into another, two separate colors coming together. Once we finish this base layer of this light green, we're going to start adding another layer of a little bit darker green. This is a green that looks a little bit more on the brown side. To get the mix to work successfully, you'll need to pay attention to the colors that are sitting beside each other. If your colors are analogous or adjacent or tertiary, then the colors can mix with no problem, similar to what we're doing on our subject. If, however, your colors are complementary or a combination of three primary or secondary colors, as an example, your colors will look muddy if they're mixed. You fix this issue by simply bringing the colors up to each other, but don't really mix or blend them. I guess you could say it's a type of faking the mix. I've got a great video on analogous colors and other color theory videos available, and I'll put the link in the description box below. Now that I've finished with the green, I erased a bit of it along the top and I'm adding in a light layer of blue. When you layer your colors, you also want to blend that color into the surrounding colors. To do that, you start with one pressure in the area where your color is going to be the darkest. Then fade that color out to the other color with a lighter pressure or that light hand. The transition between one color to another should be smooth with no lines in between them. Not only is this technique used in color mixing, but in all your layering work. I'm switching over to a bit of a darker blue right now and I'm going to go a little bit slower. So the same process that I did for the shading is going to be used on this one. And as mentioned, I'm just trying to mix my colors together. So this is about layering for mixing colors. And as I move towards the center, towards that green area, I, you're going to see that I'm going to go a lot lighter with my pencil. I've got a bit of a transition coming up right now. I'm putting down a mossy green color and I'm doing it at a pressure of about a two. You can see that I'm building up my shade. Once I've done that, I'm going to apply on top of that a layer of a blue green. And this is gonna to help to start the transition between the blue side and the green side of the circle. So I'm gonna be adding a very dark blue on the edge of the blue side of the circle and I'm blending it into the green area. So you can see I'm going a lot darker on the edge and blending it over so that it mixes. I've switched over to the dark green and you can see that as I'm working with that dark green, I'm continuing to blend in and mix those two colors together. And that's going to be the mix for this circle. We're on to number three now, layering for smooth pencil stroke. I'm gonna start by doing an outline with a blue pencil and then I'm gonna use the kneaded eraser to remove the graphite. I'm gonna start off with something that's called a contour line. That contour line, basically what it means is that it follows the contour of the subject itself. And generally this is used on anything that's round or curved. It's a really, really neat stroke that you can actually use. So generally the way that all strokes work is that when you go to put it down, you put it down at, let's say a pressure of one. As you're putting it down, you might notice that there might be some lines or some open areas. The trick is to come back and and come back with a lighter pressure with the same type of line stroke that you just used, but a lot lighter. Generally, if I have a subject that is curved and I do use a contour line on the outside, 
as I move towards the inside of the subject, I'll change that contour line to a hatch line. And hatch lines are straight lines, so you can see that's what I'm working on right now. And I'm gonna use exactly the same technique with this hatch line. So I'm gonna go over the area first at a certain pressure, and then I'm gonna come back again with a bit of a lighter pressure. So it's not going to be as heavy. And as I come back over, I'm filling in all those little lines. I'm going to transition now into a different stroke. As I move towards the center of the circle, I'm putting down a hatch line in one direction, but then I'm gonna come over it in the opposite direction. This is called a cross hatch line. So cross hatch lines go over in one direction and then they come back at a little bit of a lighter pressure in a different direction. Generally when I'm doing a drawing, I'm gonna combine all of these strokes together, again, depending on what the subject is. So if there's a lot of curves on the subject, I'm going to actually use a lot of contrast line. If it's a little bit straighter, I'm going to use more hatch lines. And you'll notice that when I do come over the line again, there's a smooth transition. You don't notice it getting a lot darker because I'm going at a lighter pressure. Okay, now my favorite pencil stroke. This is a scribbling pencil stroke. It's like little tiny circles that are kind of random. You don't take your pencil off the paper and it's a fantastic pencil stroke for doing just about everything lots and lots of fun to work with and you can do tiny little circles you can do a little bit larger circles and make it a little bit more textury and it just does a fantastic job control of the pencil is great everything in terms of pressure is really good and you can get into little tiny areas or very large areas you can use it also with all of the other pencil strokes to fill in to cover up to add more shading to add more color so this is a fantastic pencil stroke for layering the way that this pencil stroke works is identical to the other ones. You're gonna lay it down at a certain pressure, so it could be a one, a two, or a three, depending on what you're doing, and then you're gonna come back with a lighter pressure. So if you put it down at a one, then you wanna come in lighter than a one, like a 0.5. And then if you put it down as a two, then you wanna come in as a one. As you build up your shadows or your shading on your subject, you can use a harder pressure. So you can use a three and even go all the way up to a four where you're pressing really hard. So again, lots and lots of control. And you can see how I'm really, really kind of filling in beautifully with the stroke. My final application of color on this is going to be a dark blue at a pressure of about a two or a three, and I'm combining all of the different strokes together to smooth it all out. The fourth layering technique that I'm going to show you is layering for texture. Now this is a little bit of a challenge I think for a lot of people, but where do you use this? You might use this on things like fur or it could be on even on skin texture. It could be on branches if you're doing a bird or even texture of feathers. So there's lots and lots of different places that you're going to be using this layering technique. Generally, the way that I set this out is if I have a very large pattern that has a lot of texture in it, I'm going to plot that out first with a graphite pencil like what I'm doing right now. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to emphasize certain areas of that textured area. And I might be coming in with a quite a dark pencil to do that. This circle's main color is orange. I'm gonna be working with colors that are analogous to orange and deeper hues to create the texture of the subject. When working with textures, you should always consider laying down your darks first, like this tree branch, for example. Along the bottom of the tree branch, I applied a layer of the darkest color I had. This allows you to come in later while adding your lighter colors to blend into the darker textures that you just created. It's a lot easier to go from the darker texture areas first and then apply lighter colors on top than to go in the opposite direction. Keep doing this, adding more colors as you transition to the lighter orange, and even mix in some yellows to show highlights in areas on the subjects that are coming forward and not receding. As I continue to work on the textures, I'm going to be bringing in some medium red to go over some of the burgundy and develop the shadows and to make sure that I'm not going so dark around that highlight area at the top. 
I'll add in some yellows and go over the whole thing with orange. The final two circles are going to be about layering for light versus dark and they will be treated the same way, but in reverse for the color layering. The way that I layer for lights or dark subjects is different. When I have a light subject, I always start with a light base and then build up to the darks. I do the opposite for the dark subject, like these two examples of a yellow and a purple cat. If I was drawing the yellow cat, I would add in some base layers at pressure one or two of light warm gray or light brown for blocking in shadows. Then I would build up the fur through the use of texture layers, like that orange circle we just did. But the yellow cat will never have very dark shadows just like the circle. On the other hand, the purple circle is treated in the same way I would draw the purple cat. I would layer the darkest colors down in blocks of shadows in areas of the cat that are the darkest and then come in with dark purples and blacks to create the texture of the fur. Adding highlights to dark areas means making sure that you allow the layers like this purple circle to have light areas. This is what the light hand is all about. In conclusion, layering is about considering your subject, about how it's affected by its surrounding. It's about studying what colors can mix and how texture and lights and darks all have a role in the end result. So thanks so much for joining me and happy drawing.